Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Welcome back to another Warzone Breakdown. In today's gameplay, we're going to be spectating a viewer submitted game. We're going to be discussing the mistakes that he's making as well as how he's wasting time, what he should be doing instead of wasting that time to go out there, get more fights, get more kills, and maybe even get better at solidifying more wins. At the end of the day, when you guys are watching 20 kill, 30 kill games, even though it's an entertaining, it's very hard for you guys to put yourself in those shoes and kind of improve by watching that gameplay. The best way to learn in anything is to learn from your L's. So that's why we're here. That's why I created the series. That way, when you guys are making mistakes, you can hopefully learn from them, as well as sitting back, relaxed in a stress-free environment and discussing other people's mistakes. That way, again, you guys can make some mental notes. But if you do enjoy the video, make sure you leave a like on it. The goal for today's video is going to be 500 likes. Also, please leave a comment in the section below. Let me know how you guys are enjoying it. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the gameplay. All right, here we are spectating Big Happy. And they look to be going towards hospital. Not a bad spot. Hospitals are not, not as bad as it used to be. A lot of money there. A lot of gunfights. Duh, we do have some people landing. I like the fact that we're live pinging right off the bat. Hopefully, and pick up a nice little gun and get some shots off on him before he can get safe. Enemy behind us. He instantly goes down. Great observation. At least we're paying attention. Again, paying attention to this game is crucial. You guys, if y'all just focus up and you start observing the sounds and the smells and the sights around you, you guys will be a lot better in gunfights. I was just about to say pop your plate as you're moving, but he went ahead and did that. Yeah, there was some heads that landed by. So we know there are people on blue. We know there are people in the hospital building with you guys as well towards um, light green. How you guys want to approach this fight is completely up to you. I definitely pick up the Mac 10, get a close range. There we go. Hey, the train, fuck that shit up. All right, so right off the bat, decision making. We saw swapping your gun, swapping your gun, swapping your gun. As you guys are playing, Trust me, I have a bad memory, so I can I can relate to you guys. But as you're playing, you got to make a mental note of what guns you're having. That way, again, you can be snappy with it. Even though that only wasted maybe three or four seconds, that shit adds up as you're going throughout a 20-minute game. We've only been spectating for a minute and a half. We've already wasted a couple of seconds. And again, not really a big deal. But when you make a habit out of it throughout a 26-minute gameplay, and that shit will add up. And a lot of times it will get you killed, especially when we're in a hot area like hospital. Those few seconds that we're sitting there swapping our weapons, trying to figure out what we want, the other enemies that are here with us, there's a chance they might bust through the door and catch us with our pants down. So make sure you guys are just being snappy with your decision making. Again, not super crucial, something to always keep in your mind. Also, the fact that you have a MAC-10, I'd instantly myself go push over there um, onto blue ping and try to get the shots off and, and win that gunfight. Because again, at the, the beginning of the game, in my opinion, is the perfect time for you guys to go out there practice your gunfights and, and get your fights won because you do have a gulag and it's early game so if you do wipe no big deal no sweat off your back there we have the enemy in the middle of the open um we're gonna have players on the train i really don't like the fact we're focusing on that because even if we get the knock they have a huge chance of getting a kill also max 10 at that range is at least a ground one is not the play what i would have done is rock the lmg and the mac 10 instead of the dmr that lmg would have been a lot better in that range gunfight and we would have been at least able to knock them but again going back to it i wouldn't really worry about the train they're not much of a threat i'd be worried about who blue's fighting right now who we've already pinged they're the immediate threat and then we got enemies in front of us we could change position go up the ladder on the back side and again shoot down on the enemy um, even using the DMR that we have the enemy's in a bad spot We should be able to win this fight, but you know Mac 10s and your loadout That's a whole nother ball game when you're talking about range those things have range your ground loot Mac 10s not so much Enemy probably diverged back through the ravine. We do have a teammate down um, Again, I don't like the fact that right now. We're staying super hyper focused on the enemy. We are able to get the kill But your teammates gonna bleed out so at this point here, you have to make an educated decision. The moment your teammate gets knocked, you instantly need to look to the mini map and analyze the situation. Is that one kill worth $4,000? Is that one kill worth your teammate losing his gulag opportunity? I don't think so. Again, we could go to the rooftop, like I originally said, and shoot down on the enemy who is out in the open. As far as the enemy's concerned, I don't know what the hell he's doing. That's a dumbass position to be in. He should just bail from this fight altogether. But it is what it is. So let's see if he's able to make it back to his squad mates or not. Oh, and unfortunately, the uh, 
the teammate in his dumb position, he had another squad mate out there. So now, not only did we lose our teammate's life going for a kill, we also lost our own life going for a kill. Not a fan of the entire fight at all. Um, definitely just try try working your decision making better. Again, I would really focus on your immediate threat more than anybody else. Those guys may be a threat later on, but Blue is in a compound fight with somebody, and we knew that there was another team over there fighting somebody. I would have focused up on that. Or if you really wanted to get that kill, again, go to the top of that building, save your teammate, and get the shots off on the enemy. And look, this is just a little constructive criticism to help everybody. And there's some there's things that we can all learn, myself included, um, from other people. So just make sure you're taking this with an open mind. Um, it doesn't mean you're a bad player by any stretch of imagination. Again, even the best players make stupid damn decisions and stupid mistakes, and we get killed by worse players all the time. Not really sure what the enemy did on that one. The moment he had a stun, he should have pushed out there, but instead he's crouched doing doing whatever the hell he was doing. All right, we did win our gulag. Unfortunately, we did waste it. Hopefully, Sharia wins theirs as well. The rooftop's completely unlooted. Here we go. Nice little RPD. Some better loot up here for sure. Now, I'm not sure the situation. We haven't. There we go. We haven't wiped the squad here. Looks like they've already bought their loadout. And also, I'm kind of, I would say, worried about the team across the street. But there is a chance that they could push us as well. Also, be careful how you sit on this ledge, man. A lot of times, especially in higher tier lobbies, Carnity 8s and Swisses, they run rampant. So the longer you're on hospital rooftop, the bigger chance you have to get down. And if you get knocked, your teammates have to backtrack all the way back here just to get the res off. I'm all for staying on ledges and getting shots off, but the moment that you don't see them anymore, I'd pop back down, change my position, and repeat. I do like the fact that we're flanking like this. We're flanking from the hard left-hand side. I don't know why he was laying prone, I'm gonna be honest. Here's the team coming up from behind us as well. As you can see by the hit indicators, we did get shot. Here, let me rewind this real quick. We did get shot from the left, the right hand side, which could be the team that we originally died to that was out in the open, that was super vulnerable. So we are getting third party right now. Um, This guy here, not too sure what he was doing, laying prone. I really thought he was downed at first, I'm gonna be honest, but uh, he's not. And of course we have the guy in the window as well. It's an unfortunate position of getting of getting pinched. Um, again, stay aware of all the enemies around you guys. Just because you're not getting shot by them at that moment in time doesn't mean they're not trying to position on you. Especially when they hear the gunfights, they're gonna try to third party, and that's exactly what happened. Now there's a chance it may be their fourth squad member, because I only see three enemies right now, but I do think it's the team we were originally fighting. Oh, that's unfortunate, ladies and gentlemen. Damn. Damn, so now we're left with two of us. Okay, so let's let's again recap and, and, and talk about what really happened in that fight. Now, originally I loved how we were converging on the enemy from different directions. We were coming in from the far left side, teammates coming up the middle, and we had another teammate, I think it was green, coming from the far right side to really just kind of converge on them. Y'all did great tactics there, but again, getting third party kind of puts you guys at a disadvantage. Now, when you guys are fighting in a building, you gotta be very careful on how you're working your cover. The guy was able to nail his headies. He was able to win the fight on the last guy we were spectating. It was unfortunate, but again, that's where movement comes to play. Y'all are just planting your feet and fighting the enemy. No one's bunny hopping. No one's drop shotting. No one's slide canceling side to side, working the corners. Everyone just kind of planting their feet and getting their shots off. Remember, mobility is key when it comes to war zone because of how chaotic it can be. You guys are mobile. Not only are you running a risk of getting shot by the guys you're fighting with, but you run a risk of getting shot in the back. All right, here we are now going to what they go for. Now, look, we have Scavenger, which wouldn't be a bad option, but the free loadout drops coming in relatively shortly, and I want to get my teammates back more than anything right now. So at this point in the game, what I would do, because we're down two guys in quads, is I would go for supply runs. I would instantly have one of us land on a supply run, pick that bitch up, leave your teammate in outer space, and the moment it identifies what buy station to go to, have him land on it, and then vice versa. The two, the two y'all that are on the ground already. After you get your teammate back, y'all go and find a supply run that's nearby, and have homeboy you just got in the air stay up in outer space and land on the last one. The safest bet to get your teammates back as fast as possible. Also, when you guys are doing scavengers, you want to have your entire squad back because the more players you have up, the more money you get. Your teammates are dead; they don't get bags. But if your teammates are alive, 
They get all the bags. Let's see what they end up doing. They may, they may divert. No, don't go for that guy. All right, we're going for scabs anyway, you know, and to each their own. You can still get your teammates back with it. And then we can still rely on the loadout drop, but hangers is going to be a hectic spot regardless. So we do run a risk of running into another squad. Now, guys, look, if y'all are struggling with your gameplay, please, I don't care if you get five kills or what, please submit your gameplay to me. There's a lot of people submitting gameplay that, you know, 20 kills, 30 kills, and keep doing that. We need that aggressive gameplay as well. But um, I really, really, really want to see some nice 10, 15 minute or full gameplay of you guys out there who are only able to drop three or four kills. Those are the guys that I'm really trying to reach. Um, but again, on the flip side, the aggressive gameplay is great because we can still teach things from that. But I want to see you guys who are really struggling. The point fours out there, the point sevens, the, the 1.0s. Please submit gameplay if you guys have it. And you guys really genuinely want to know how you're supposed to improve. I was going through Discord today and the last 20 videos were all like 20 plus kill games, which again is good. Thank you guys. But uh I'm looking more I'm looking more for some noobs here lately so I can help those guys get a little bit better and hopefully in turn have a little bit more fun. But here we are again. Um trying to get our teammates so we can go for the scavengers. I'll here. Drop him off real quick, let him get his load out. No big deal there. Also, guys, if you're tired of playing the game or you're tired of going to work or going to school, tired of shit, try Sneak Energy. This shit is the truth. I preach it every day in every video. But again, guys, I'm trying to spread awareness. I've had every energy drink under the sun, almost every pre-workout as well. This is clean cut. doesn't give you the jitters. It allows you to focus. It opens up your mind. It opens up everything. And you can really just put out some great gameplay um, as well as just having some energy throughout life to try it. Buy the sample pack. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments section below. If you guys are already on Sneak Energy, hype it up in the comments. Let everybody know that I'm not just full of shit advertising because I'm sponsored by them. That it's really the truth. And also, guys, make sure you use code SAVAGE at checkout. At this point here, though, not sure what we're doing exactly. I, I want us all getting the chopper. Um, every second wasted is, is a second vulnerable in my eyes. That's why I really harp on it. Um, even from the three seconds from changing our weapon or the 10 seconds of us just kind of running around aimlessly in the hangar. I know that sometimes this game gets a little overwhelming and you're trying to get your, gather your thoughts, but just make practice of always following the person that's in the lead. Every team should have a team leader. I mean, even if you don't, the guy flying the helicopter. If he's hovering, instantly diverge to him so y'all can finish this shit as fast as possible and go out and get kills. A lot of players struggle getting kills because they waste too much time. Not saying that specifically about Big Happy, but in general, that's something we see pretty often when we're, uh, when we're spectating randoms. We're swapping our plates out. Not against that at all. Let's go ahead and pick that shit up and roll on out. I like to see that going for bounties. Hell yes. Get some aggressive gameplay going on. And also, guys, if y'all don't utilize choppers, I really recommend, especially in quads or any mode, really, utilize the hell out of helicopters. These things are, they're clutch. And there's not many of them on the map. And it's amazing how many games I play and spectate where people just don't pick up helicopters. It's crazy. Solos is a different ball game. You don't really need them. But if you're trying to get aggressive, I still recommend them. When we're talking about quads, absolutely. Got a bounty march to the left hand side, but first we're gonna go utilize this fire sale. Now you gotta be careful when fire sales happen. A lot of people diverge. A lot of people diverge to uh, the buy station to so take advantage of it. We have an enemy UAV up above us, so that means they're relatively close. So we gotta get in, get out, and do it quickly. Yeah, we're being shot at right now. Wasn't surprised on that one at all. Pull up your big map. So right now we're looking around. We're like, where are we getting shot from? Granted, you know, controlled players, it may be a little bit more difficult for you guys to pull up your map, but I hope not. So we have a couple blips out here. They seem like they're pretty far away. They might, they may not even be the ones shooting at us, but I at least want to glance at my map to make sure that they're not. Because if they are close enough, you pull up your map, you're like, holy shit, they're just at the hangar. Then you can start, you know, rotating around, get the chopper, go after them, whatever it is. But you guys can get safe from harm's way and maybe even combat the enemy. 
Something we don't see a lot in any gameplay is people utilizing their big map. That big map is literally a cheat code. Like right now, for instance, we have an advanced UAV in the air. I would want to know exactly where they're at. So you want to pull up your big map in this situation. So there we go. I paused it right when you did it, my man. So you can see where the enemies are. We got a team right here. We got a team right here. We got a team right here. Now, when you look at this, what's the first thing that screams in your face? Screw these guys. Don't even try it. Now, you can hopefully get this guy going to the bias station, pick him off. Um, but I don't, again, don't waste your time combating people inside a control tower. It's just a waste of time, in my opinion. Now, if you're there to gatekeep them later on in the game, that's fine. But first and foremost, you have two objectives. You have a bounty that's going to be expiring relatively soon. You have these guys over here that look to be going to the buy and are extremely vulnerable. When I look at this map, I'm going over here. Yeah, you have a bounty. It's up to you guys, but we know where they're at now. So I would go to this team first. They're closer, they're vulnerable, they're out in the open, and the buildings are really easy to work. These right here, if they go to the buildings of camp, could be a little bit longer drawn out fight. So I'd kill this team first, then I would bounce to the bounty. But realistically, there's no right or wrong answer for what team, it's just personal preference. I just like to take out the easier teams first. Well, they do have a bounty, and if they want that money, they want that prize, and that's probably where they're gonna direct themselves to, I think. No, I'm not really sure where we're going, actually. Looks like we're going storage. Sorry for my crackly voice, guys. I'm sick of shit right now. <laughs> That's why I can't do the butt savages right now, guys. I've been I, I sound like an eight-year-old smoker. I can't do it. I'm sorry. All right, not no, not really a fan of this at all either. Again, wasted time. We just had a advanced UAV tell us where everyone's at. Instead of hunting them down, we're sitting here waiting for the enemy to come to us. Not really a good play in my eyes. Um, I'm not sure if this team wins the game. I haven't even looked at the title. I don't know what exactly is going to happen, but even if they do win the game, they would probably win with more kills if they would have gone for the easier teams. Now we're going to now we're going to Storage Town to only hawk down two guys instead of one going after the bounty and two going after the guys that are by the buy station that were literally right next to us. Again, no right or wrong answer. If you kill these guys, more power to you, but you, you really want to use the best. You really want to make the best of the information you were given. And that's what this video is all about, guys, is trying to help you guys increase your awareness, increase your decision making, increase your kills, increase your win ratio, and just increase your overall fun. So right now we're lagging behind a little bit. Our teammates are about to go into combat without us. We definitely want to traverse to the enemies all together. That way, if they get a lucky knock like they do, we're there to back them up. Unfortunately, they got two knocks and because we're so delayed, they're able to get the executions. Now, the hesitation. All right, so big happy in this fight here. Again, just to recap, what I instantly wanted you guys to do is diverge together. You guys need to look at the mini map as you're rotating. If you find yourself lagging behind, tell your teammates, guys, slow down real quick. Let me catch up because what just happened is your teammates fell into a 2v2 and they both got knocked because the enemies were camping separate cubbies. I always tell you guys not to camp cubbies, but because of their positioning and where those cubbies are located, it's very easy for them to get the kills. Now, the hesitation. The moment our teammates went down, it's still technically a 2v2 because blue's relatively close. Um, I would have kept out the MP5 and I would have pushed in there. We have a stun grenade. We can literally stun one enemy in here, turn on the guy to our right hand side, kill him, and then snap back to the guy in the cubby right there. It's a great way to 1v2, but if you're lacking confidence in your gunfights, get your other teammate, Dark Blue, to come to you really quick so y'all can literally just blow through these guys. Also, Thermite, you can utilize that. You can throw the Thermite in there to suppress him, um, stun him, stun the other guy, whatever, what. The options are out there. I don't like the fact that we're kind of frozen up just holding this angle. We may win, but again, you want to approach fights to where your teammates don't ever die. If we would approach this fight from a 4v2 standpoint, we'd probably all still be alive, um, especially if we would have been there when they got knocked. Took them a while to get executed because we were so far lagging behind. Of, of course, we weren't able to do anything about it. There's the thermite. Missed the stun, unfortunately. We were able to hit it still. Let's see what we can do. Going for the execution, wasting the last of our ammo, trying to bail back. I wouldn't have gone for the exe in that fight. I would have finished it out. Another, another situation here. Okay, so I, I had a feeling this would happen. That's why I didn't say much. So let, let's rewind a little bit. You know, I don't like the fact you executed. The moment that you got the kill, I would have saved your 29 bullets and I would turn on the enemy. And then with blue being right above him, he could have jumped down and y'all could have diverged on him and blew him away instantly. 
but because we because we wasted our ammo we had to bail out of the fight to reload and replay it up which isn't a bad idea so right here hold this angle reload and replay it up and why do we hold this angle for two reasons one keep eyes on the enemy if you guys are holding this if you're holding this angle you can see if the enemy leaves or not you always want to keep eyes on the enemy yes he may push you but again teammates above you it's 2v1 you shouldn't have a problem with that two your teammate goes down you're close or if you go down he's close going back to what we just talked about what we did here was we we panicked we got a little afraid we separated ourselves from the enemy plating away from the enemy blinding ourselves from him and making it almost impossible to back our teammate up our teammate decides to go into a 1v1 and of course he gets absolutely destroyed and then does he get executed no he does not all right so thankfully he didn't get executed but again guys you want to try to approach these fights a little bit better teamwork mindset push together blow through the enemy together all right blue's grabbing the chopper that he left safely on the rooftop i didn't even talk about that but i like that he kept it safe again choppers are relatively important you guys want to navigate fast have aggressive gameplay have a good tool to get good positioning choppers are what it's all about i love the fact that he parks it safely before he engages in the fight here we are with our squad mates back now fully ready to go fully looted up we got a chopper we got an enemy on top of the apartment rooftop to our east it should be a relatively easy fight all right we got a chopper coming in and three of us are on foot now what i would like to see what i would like to see is all of us kind of push them together so what we're doing in this position is we're really risking it. We have no idea what the squad is doing. We could be a full four man camp in the rooftop. It could be one guy. It could be a full four man camp in every building. What we're doing in this position, and again, it's all in hindsight, but what I don't like about this is the fact that we're going in by ourselves and blinded. Yes, we're trying to hit the enemy from different angles, but if he's camping, it's not really going to help out. All we're doing is revealing ourselves to these windows and the windows around us to get killed. Also, Orange is over here in a whole different fight. Not sure exactly what his gameplay is, but again, work together. Teamwork is imperative. Teamwork's the dream work. We didn't make that saying up just for the fun of it. It's the damn truth. Now, a lot of times you approach fights like here, people are still looting. It's still, you know, it's not, it's not early in the game. You shouldn't be looting at this point, but we know how Call of Duty players are for the most part. But we know how a lot of people play, and a lot of people are still looting in this position. Fortunately for us, it looks like it's only one guy, and he bailed off the roof. All right, so our teammate's shooting at the enemy right now, which means he's suppressing the enemy. That enemy is worried about your teammate on the rooftop. Good shit on Dark Blue for, for doing that, right? In this position, we're holding the angle. I want to see us push that enemy. With, with green chasing him down and blue suppressing him, we need to be helping out. There's no reason for us to be in this building. Yes, we could probably change our angle, get up higher, and shoot the enemy. But what if the enemy runs away? Because that's exactly what it looks like he's doing. So even if we get the angle, we're still looting. No! Yo, big happy, no! Your teammate's going in right now. We should not be opening crates, should not be looting. We don't need anything right now. What we need to do is kill this guy. The moment Blue started shooting out from the rooftop, I would have pushed and tried to get my shots off. We probably would have. Granted, we still won the fight, but again, constructive criticism just to help you get the kill instead of your teammates, which you don't want to be fighting your teammates for kills, but I do believe we probably could have got that kill relatively easy. Uh, train section. Oh, we're getting shot at from the west right now. Great reaction time. Diving back to cover. Trying his best to play it and peek it. Spots the enemy. Gets the... I need to ping the enemy. I know it's harder on controller, so I'm not going to slay too hard. But we definitely need at least need to ping. All right, again. So Orange is in a, on the hill right now. He's in a pretty vulnerable position. I like that he's bailing back to get better cover. Good shit. And then we have Bertha and everyone flanking inwards. So right now, we're kind of out position. Our team is using the hill to push, which is awesome. We could push to the graveyard and essentially pinch the enemy. There is a risk with that, though, because we'll be by ourselves. And if that team happens to be waiting for us or knows that we're coming, again, we run the risk of dying. So we could do one of two things. Go through the graveyard, play a little bit more ballsy to hopefully pinch the enemy or divert with our teammates. But again, we got to do it safely. Also, right now, because of our separation, we could get shot again in the back for making all the noise that we're making. I like the fact that we're going through the graveyard. I would have done it a little bit sooner, but I like the fact that we're doing it. Right, Looks like we won't even be needed, though, because Blue's running every bitch over in the world. Look at this guy. Look at this guy crouch walking. No! Way to stay observant and kind of spot everyone going around you. So, so far from the gunfights, big happy. Just where we stand right now, I would say um, I really like the fact that you're aware. 
you know, you're at least spotting enemies. You don't have to be in your scope all the time to spot them. You're, you're trying to do great teamwork. You're trying to flank the enemies correctly. Um, the only thing I would correct right now, I think, is your separation. Oh my God, look at that shit, boy. Let's get a little rewind on that. Look at this, look. But Savage, so-and-so said we're supposed to play the edge of the circle. Okay, well, that's cool. But even if we weren't here, dude, half these players are gonna die. This is the reason why I'm not a fan of playing the edge of the circle. Now, this has nothing to do with the team we're spectating. This is just a side note. So we have three, maybe four teams, depending on if they're full or not, that are trying to get safe. These guys got great positions, so they'll be fine. Um, but these teams here, while they're shooting and fighting the teams, gatekeeping them, they have a huge chance to get third partied, right? So the problem with playing the edge of the circle is a lot of other players do the exact same thing. And a lot of times, especially in these smaller circles, you're going to get third partied. If you guys play the edge of the circle in these smaller circles, you will get third partied more times than none. So guys, again, what I like to do if you're playing the edge is going after teams. Don't play the edge and allow the gas to force you in because it puts you in a bad position like these guys here. They're in a bad spot. What are they going to do to, how are they going to out-rotate the guys in this building? These guys have the position. What in the hell could these guys possibly do to stay safe? No, they can't rotate this way. They could maybe rotate through here, but then you got homeboy right here gatekeeping them. And then again, these guys. So this team will probably be dead. Just again, a side note for why I don't agree with playing the edge of the circle passively. Because that's exactly what those guys are doing. Now, from our standpoint, they're trying to debate whether they want to push it or wait for them. Get to the rooftop, bro. We got we got a staircase. We got four people. We got dead silence. We got UAVs. So get to the top of train station and shoot down on these motherfuckers, bro. Look, those guys that were in that building gatekeeping, they're going to be on the rooftop. Most of them will. Guess what we can do? Easily, easily kill the sons of bitches. Also, I'd take that cluster strike, honestly. I'd use my UAV, take that cluster, because you're going to need it if you go with my play. If you, if you end up Going over there and killing these kids, it'd be beautiful. There you go. We gotta go fast though, getting wasted time. These guys are fighting right now. The circle's collapsing in three seconds. We need to join in on this now. The longer it takes for us to get to that rooftop, the more chance the enemies have to zip line up there and get that position first. Vehicle pushing us right now. We're gonna try to go for it, I think. The one man it looks like. Blue's already. Blue's already on it. Again, pay attention to your mini map. The blip's right here. The blip's right here, and we're still looking at the vehicle. Mini map awareness is key. Please make sure you're paying attention to that bitch. Blue got the kill. Again, we need to be focused on the other fight, too. The moment that happens, look around. No one else is on UAV close by. There were a few people in the sky, but that was it. Again, we need to maintain focus on the actual fight at hand that we wanted to engage with, which, which was the guy on light blue ping, our ping. And also, when you look at the circle, those people will be probably trying to get to the rooftop of train station. So we need to help Blue out. Blue's going to get into a lot of fights, which he is right now. Um, and the last thing I want him to do is have to fight that by himself. Now, when you look at the circle, this wouldn't be a bad spot to play because it's still safe. But this is on the edge, right? I'd rather right here because you have a lot more area. You can see this side. You can see this side. You can see this side. You can see everything. So in this position, I'd want to play this rooftop right here so I can contest everybody. If you're playing this, you're limiting yourself to the hill and this right here. We definitely need to go help Ricks, though, 100%. Um, or if you don't want to go over to Ricks, guess where these guys are going to be coming? To us. So we already should have been posted up right here to shoot down on the enemy and, again, help him out. My big happy acknowledging that and hopefully gonna get some shots off on the enemy. How many do you have with you over there, Rick? Not really a fan of the ways to cluster. One, it's in the gas. The fucking broke all my plates. And again, originally, if we had instantly went to the rooftop before the circle started collapsing, we could have probably clustered the rooftop and got a lot of the kills off. Rix is in a very bad position, jumping off the rooftop. I do not like that. He should have played, and Rick seems like he's got shit together, but he definitely should have played the roof and gotten back to safety. Unfortunately, he went down. We should have good beams on these enemies. There's one knock. He didn't execute. White, watch, watch for the second one. There's another one down there, Sadio. All right, now we could still work our way over to the other rooftop, which is where I want to be. 
I'd want to be on the big part of train station. And right there, there, there it is, right here. And this is another reason why I'd want to be in the center, circle favor. Yes, the circle has a chance to favor the edge of the circle, but most of the time it doesn't. Most of the time it's going to go somewhere centralized. Maybe not exactly centered, but it's going to favor the center to some form of fashion. That's exactly what happens. And as you guys can see, the little rooftop of train station is still relatively safe. Now, unfortunately, the other enemies are already over there, so it's too late for us to work on the gas and try to get there. We've got to leave high ground, put ourselves in an even worse position just to stay alive a little bit longer. Not a fan of this at all. We have glints going off on the hill as well. Yep. Great teamwork. Great comms. When it comes to in-game, guys, positioning is everything. If you guys are out positioned for a split second, you guys will have a clusterfuck going on. That's exactly what's happening now. We're asking for help with our from our teammates, but unfortunately, our teammates are dealing with other fights and other enemies that have them suppressed. We could gatekeep these guys coming off the hill. Um, it's just going to be a very hard, very hard thing to do because the enemies could still rotate all the way around to the northeast to get safe. They don't have to actually come to us, and that's exactly what it looks like they're doing. Got to be careful for the headshot. This is very ballsy. I don't like this at all. I'm having panic attacks. All right, there we go. Vehicle coming at us right now. Don't forget about the guys on the rooftop of trains still, as well as the guys that are going to be clearly in that building. Great shots. Oh, man, we held up. Oh, shit, we're getting pushed right now. Unfortunately, two things wrong. One. Let's go back, boys. So my cardinal rule is never hold your parachute. I always am a firm believer in pulling your parachute at the last second. Um, when he jumped off of here, we instantly should just fall to the ground. We shouldn't even be in our chute right now. Fall to the ground and right before you're about to hit the ground, pull your chute. Because what this did was it got our armor plates broken. And unfortunately, as you saw the enemy on the right hand side, now we have an enemy that we're going to have to fight with no plates. Chance of winning these fights is usually slim to none depending on how bad this player is. Let's see. Now in this fight, since we're in a bad spot, I'd go ahead and get out, get away from this area. Work to another building. We do have a gas mask as well. We do have a ladder also on the backside. We could climb up. I'm glad we didn't do that though because we've been vulnerable to the enemies down to the east. Again, that enemy didn't clear his right hand side, which saved our ass um, and allowed us to get the kill. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we're in a 3v12 situation right now, breaking the glass. And unfortunately, we have enemy team relatively close. I really wouldn't be worried too much about the guys over there. I'd be worried about the guys on the right side of this building right across from us. Also, ammo count. You got to pay attention to your ammo count. Before you do anything, decide if you want to reload or if you're going to swap to your secondary. At this moment in time, you need to swap to your secondary weapon if you're not going to reload your gun because when the enemies hear you start to res, what are they usually going to do? They're usually going to push your ass and then what are you going to have to do? Stop rezzing, pull your gun out, and shoot them. You're not going to kill anybody with eight bullets. So before you hit the res, please hit the Y button or whatever button is on Xbox. I've got you. Push over here, uh Grenade going out. There's an enemy right there. Finally swapping to our weapon. We're able to get the kill. But again, there's another enemy in the front window as well. It's a 3v10 right now. There's a lot of people alive in this circle. And blue building is where we need to go. Again, still not reloading our gun. But then again, this position here, your LMG is not really needed. I'd still want to reload it though if we're going to have it out in our hands. So you, you can see it in game how players normally start to panic, right? And we're all guilty of it. Every every single one of us, we get in game, our blood pressure gets gets high, we're getting intense, and we don't really start noticing the simple things around, like our ammo count, a mini map, things like that. All right, unfortunately, the enemy's coming down here. Hopefully, stop the reload and get the kill. Now, um, in this position here, we knew there's enemies above us. Um, Sherio should be watching the staircase to back us up or at least watching our back. There's two doors behind us, one on our left-hand side and one actually behind us in the staircase. Sherio wants to sit and play it up in the corner. She needs to be in this one so that she can at least keep eyes on the enemy and help us while we're rezzing. The enemy instantly going for the execute instead of going for the guy who's actually able to shoot. And because of it, he goes down. Bad play on the enemy's... Oh, shit. Bad play on the enemy's side, but... Someone's meleeing us. I can't see a damn thing. Great tap. Get upstairs. Plate up. We need to move. 
I do like the reload before we plate, though. He needs, he needs some ammunition. We still have three teams left right now. All right, so in this spot here, you know, there's a lot going on. We're going back and forth. We're trying to figure out what to do. Two teams are fighting behind us right now towards the east, right? Now, we're gonna, we need to rotate, but there's one more team not accounted for, and I guarantee you that team here was playing this building, and they're already rotating. So what we need to do is the same, but be aware that they're going to be waiting for us. I wouldn't allow the gas to even hit me. I wouldn't play back. Rotate on the edge of the circle. Never rotate in the middle of the circle because you can get shot from both sides. Look at this opening right here. We could have made it if we would have moved sooner through that opening and worked that building as cover. That's the most important part. All right. Don't go for the execute to this position. Now we have to, now we're forced to reload. We got an enemy right there. An enemy shooting us to the Northwest. We need to work ourselves to the wall because we're getting shot from the North, the Northwest, which is more important than anything right now. It is a three, I'm sorry, two V, two V three situation. That went from six players to two real quick. GG. Now I did break down your gameplay a lot and we really went in depth with a lot of different things. I paused the video a lot, but again, the purpose of this video wasn't to be mean, wasn't to be harsh. I'm not trolling anybody. It is to literally give constructive criticism. That way they can go back out and get more kills because I do believe we could have had 15 kills that game. Um, and we could have won that game a lot safer, right? We really risked it at the end. We got very lucky that no one was on the outside of the wall gatekeeping us. Um, we were able to get those kills. Like I said, it went from six players to two real fast. I think everyone just caught up in the gas. And I do believe we got a little lucky at the ending. But regardless, your ADS sensitivity seems on point. Your tracking seems pretty decent. Um, still a little bit of work to do as far as pushing together, utilizing teamwork to get the fights won fast and efficiently. We lost our teammates a lot just on hesitation. So make sure when you're playing the game um, with your squad, you try to work towards them a lot faster. And that way, when y'all converge on an enemy, y'all do it together instead of tunneling in one at a time. But again, thank you, brother, for submitting your gameplay. I really hope you learned something from the video and as well as everybody watching the video right now. Again, this game is meant to be fun, but it is damn stressful. And a lot of the times we die, it's usually mistakes that we as players are making. And all we got to do is break the bad habits, start being a little bit more aware of what we're doing. We can go out and win some more games efficiently. But again, guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like on it. The goal for today's video is going to be 500 likes. And until next time, guys, you have a good one and good luck in Warzone.